Welcome everyone at this uh, press conference uh, about uh, capital markets. Actually, the official title is Accelerating Capital Markets Development in Emerging Economies. And we're looking at the country case study of Colombia. That's a very long title. And so I'm going to ask uh, one of my speakers, Andre Bellelio, to explain us a little bit what that means. And then afterwards, we'll hear from Minister Cárdenas about his uh, vision for the development of Colombia's capital markets. And then we have a special guest today uh, that we welcome, uh, the Minister of Trade. Welcome to all of the speakers and thank you uh, to everyone uh, who came to the press conference. Let's dive right into it because we have only 15 minutes and I'll uh, start with Andre. Andre, uh, you have made this report with your team uh, to talk about the capital market of Colombia uh, as a case study um, of uh, uh, how capital markets can drive economic growth. Uh, could you explain us uh, briefly to begin? Uh, uh, what the situation of Colombia's capital market is, and then tell us a little bit more about what recommendations you have to develop the capital market in Colombia. Thank you, Peter, and uh, thank you, Minister, for taking the time for the press conference. It's, uh, it's an honor to be up here with you. Um, as context, this report is part of an initiative that we've run at the Forum for two years now on accelerating capital markets development in emerging economies. Uh, we started in 2014, given the increasing importance of capital markets, especially to long-term investing, um, as well as the fact that in a lot of emerging economies, the size of capital markets remain somewhat underdeveloped compared to the current size of the economies and the potential those economies have moving forward. Uh, Colombia had a decade of uh, very impressive growth of their capital markets, and like many emerging markets, um, at the end of the commodities boom a few years ago, um, have now been facing a few, uh, a few difficulties, a few headwinds. Uh, this is not exclusive to Colombia. Uh, and I should mention as well that this report covers uh, Indonesia as well. Um, capital markets is a very broad topic though. So uh, in conjunction with the ministry and in conjunction with market participants here in Colombia, uh, over which we interviewed about 100, um, both in Colombia and abroad, um, the, the idea was to focus on the equity market, and in particular, uh, particularly the, the depth and liquidity in the equity market, which was seen as being somewhat <coughs> below uh, the level of some of uh, Colombia's emerging market peers. Um, the report uh, contains uh, various action areas that have been recommended by the market stakeholders. I should add, the forum did not write this report. This is really a reflection of those who participated, both from the public sector and the private sector side. Uh, and there were four kind of action areas that I'll mention very briefly that were um, seen as the, the shortest term priorities. Um, the first one is creating additional investment opportunities uh, in the market, uh, broadening the investor base. This was one that was mentioned uh, many times, uh, both in our interviews and in an event we did that the minister attended in, in Bogota uh, in December, um, approving market access and efficiency, and finally um, attracting global interest um, from the foreign investment community. Yep. Uh, and these were the four the four key areas. Four key areas. Could you explain us briefly also uh, why you think that is beneficial for Colombia to work on these areas? And perhaps telling us first a bit about the size, uh, some key figures of the size of Colombian uh, capital markets, and then what the potential benefits are for the economy to work on those. Sure. Um, if in the annex of the report, if you look at uh, the global competitiveness report that the forum uh, publishes every year. Colombia has been steadily moving up the rankings over the last uh, two to three years. It actually, uh, in many respects, is ahead of Indonesia, which is the other country uh, in this report. And what's interesting is over the last couple of years, the, the area or the pillar of that report where Colombia has uh, done the best and improved the most is uh, financial market development. Um, and there's been a clear link between financial uh, uh, market development and economic growth across many countries. Um, and as I mentioned, Colombia had a long period of very strong growth. Um, part of the reason that we uh, chose Colombia as well is the fundamentals are very good, very good. Uh, as well. Investor protections are the best in Latin America. They're top 10 in the world here in, uh, here in Colombia. Um, the market, as I said, has been growing uh, quite substantially. And uh, Colombia is also in the process of embarking on its uh, largest infrastructure uh, development plan uh, in its history. Um, we heard the president mention earlier today uh, that peace is nearing with the final negotiations, yeah. um, and estimates suggest that between one to two percent uh, additional economic growth may come from that as well. So Colombia is increasingly being seen as a, a as an interesting and, and important uh, investment uh, um, destination uh, for foreign investors, and building up the local market with domestic players as well. It can only help with uh, Colombia's long-term growth plans. 
last question before I turn to uh, Mr. Cardenas. I just wanted to get those key figures from you. I believe uh, uh, the number of companies listed on a stock exchange is an interesting point to talk about. Uh, the free float, the average free float, uh, and um, uh, and uh, uh, if you have any other number that you can share with us about the sure. key numbers. Uh, yeah, there are fewer companies uh, listed on the, the Columbia Stock Exchange than their peers here in Latin America. About 70, uh, 74? Uh, 74, I think, is the exact. Um, and a lot of the large companies, Ecopetrol, for example, um, are a lot of the market capitalization that's here. And actually, speaking of stock markets, another uh, area that I didn't mention that I'm sure the minister will mention as well is Columbia's integration into MILA, the integrated market, the Pacific Alliance which is another uh, positive uh, factor for investors when they're looking at Colombia. The market capitalization of the Mila stock exchanges now, which are Mexico, Chile, Peru, and, and Colombia, is now larger than Brazil, uh, which is the larger cap largest capital market in Latin, uh, in Latin America. So, Okay. Well, thank you for uh, those points and, and for your insights. And now I want to turn uh, to Minister Cárdenas. And perhaps what I could ask um, uh, from you is uh, what your vision is for the development of Colombia's capital markets. Uh, and what uh, your priorities are uh, in uh, your administration time. Well, thank you very much. So let's do this in two steps. One, I'll answer some of the questions in English for the English-speaking audience, and then we could do some comments Feel in free Spanish. To, to speak Spanish. Uh, there's instantaneous translation, so that's okay. Okay, so just a word in English. Um, the World Economic Forum has kindly uh, offered to Colombia a debate on two key issues, capital markets and financial inclusion, using the framework of the, of the WEF, which means engaging in a conversation, the private sector, the academia, and government. So we've had two roundtables, two working days, full working days in the last six months um, with the different players on these two topics. Here, we're talking about the capital markets uh, initiative. And after the research that was conducted by the WEF, after listening to all the views of the different participants and players in the capital markets in Colombia, we've come to a set of conclusions on what are the priorities, what needs to be done. Let me focus on what we think is the most important aspect of that, which is the integration of our capital markets within the context of the Pacific Alliance. The Pacific Alliance has been a great initiative for promoting trade. Um, the, 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 the first aspect of the Pacific Alliance was basically on the trade in goods and services. Now we're taking a step beyond and we're going to uh, move into the integration of our capital markets. What is the initiative here? Uh, we want pension funds and other institutional investors to work in the four countries as if it was their domestic market. That means that our institutional investors can have a regional market. So the restrictions that apply are lifted. If, if a Colombian pension fund invests in Peru in the stock exchange or buys bonds in Peru, that should be considered as a domestic investment and should not be computed under the ceilings of foreign investment. Same for us. We want the Mexican, the Peruvian, the Chilean pension funds to come and invest in Colombia. And we need that, especially now in the context of the infrastructure plan, the 4G. Because in the 4G, we need more muscle, we need more investors, we need to deepen our, our capital markets to make sure that these projects find adequate financing. That's one aspect of this. The second element here is the use of the capital markets in order to promote growth in the small and medium enterprises. It was already mentioned that the size of our, cap our capital market has been increasing. Certainly, the market capitalization of our stock exchange has increased. That's for sure. Uh, but that, in a way, is a reflection that the bigger corporations in Colombia have grown. But now we need more participants. We need more listed companies. So we need to, pu to push uh, aggressively uh, the benefits of the capital markets for more companies to participate, especially the SMEs. 
This is part of our vision, the vision of a new economy, an economy where the private sector um, has uh, the right incentives in the financial markets, in tax policies, in uh, issues related to education, infrastructure, so that the, inf in the manufacturing sector, agriculture, tourism, uh, the export of uh, health services, for example, can actually take the lead and be the sectors that grow uh, in Colombia at the fastest pace. And for that, we need access to the capital markets for those uh, players. Uh, so in, 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 in a sum, we are uh, seeing our capital markets development as crucial for this new stage that the Colombian economy is entering, where, again, it's the private initiative, it's entrepreneurs, it's uh, innovators that will play the, the key role in stimulating and, and taking the lead in our economy. Thank you very much. And so I, I remember from that, uh, that we'll see uh, within the Pacific Alliance, hopefully one day, uh, all investments as if they were domestic yes. uh, investments, which would uh, bring more muscle, as you said, uh, into uh, the development of capital markets. And that should allow uh, you to uh, work on that new economy uh, that you were talking about. Um, is there anything uh, specific that you would like to mention, or, or should I turn over to uh, Minister Lacouture, uh, to make an announcement uh, about uh, uh, her uh, uh, specialty, uh, which is uh, uh, trade and um, industry. Well, thank you for the invitation, and I do apologize to get in the press conference as I we did, but uh, we wanted to share a little bit more about the development of uh, Colombia as a uh, country that have new opportunities and also the industrial development that we have been going through the past the, the past of this year. If I may allow, I would like to talk in Spanish sure. so it can be easy Absolutely. to understand by our colleagues in here in Colombia. One of the things that we were mentioning and the reason why Minister Cárdenas invited me to participate at this press conference is because of the wonderful results that Colombian industry has had year to date. One of the most important opportunities and actually one of the main reasons why the World Economic Forum decided to stage this meeting in Medellín, Colombia is precisely because of the change that the country has undergone in recent years and also because of the transformation taking place not just in industry but also in each of the different sectors. The results of the survey and the industry numbers published today are evidence of that. We see that the joint work done by the Ministry of Finance and by each of the ministries that uh, impact industry are bearing fruit. Colombia has a positive result today of 8.4%. And if we compare that to uh, 2015, it was minus 2.6% at the time. So we've seen a growth not just in numbers, but in sectors as well. We now have 29 sectors that are growing and have had a positive benefit and this is supplemented by industry's response and also more sales, 8.8%. And in employment, we have seen a 1.1 growth in formal employment, which brings about not just long-term growth, but also constant growth and also the formalization of jobs in Colombia. And that is what we wanted to tell you. And thank you for giving me the chance to tell you. There's an, an, an enormous rebound in economic growth uh, in, a, in a certain part from minus 2% to about 8% uh, uh, year over year, uh, if my Spanish is good enough. And otherwise, I will listen to the translation. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I want to thank uh, all of you to come here, uh, also to Mr. La Couture for your announcement, Mr. Cárdenas and uh, uh, André uh, Bellelio from the World Economic Forum. If you have some time for to answer some questions, I would suggest perhaps uh, that we take the conversation one-to-one uh, -one with a few journalists outside. Uh, as I am informed that we have another press conference coming up here in about uh, eight minutes, and, and uh, we'll have to make room Good. for that. <laughs> if you allow me to say one additional word Absolutely. On, uh, in Spanish. Please. <laughs> 
as pointed out by uh, the Minister of uh, Trade, Industry, and Tourism, the data published today by Dane in respect of the industry growth and uh, these sectors' sales numbers are fantastic and reveal that the industry is the leading sector of the Colombian economy, the sector growing at the highest possible rates. And uh, this isn't just the Cartagena refinery that does contribute. No, this includes uh, 29 sectors that make up our industry. And this is a very important and positive piece of data. And what is a driving industry in Colombia? Well, import substitution. Colombians are now buying uh, Colombian products that uh, have a better price compared to imports and have nothing to envy in terms of quality. So sectors like uh, the garment industry, the shoe industry, Beverages are all sectors with very positive growth rates. And as far as sales are concerned, the growth in total sales was 5.4% in April, 5.4% in April. And the important thing is that for the first time, the car sales increased again, and these had been seriously hit by the uh, revaluation of the peso and now we see positive growth in car sales and this is very good news for the automobile industry because we now have a positive uh, car sale number so in short the new model the new economy driven by uh, the uh, sectors uh, led by uh, Minister Maria Claudia Lacutir is a model bearing the expected results. Tourism, industry, trade uh, are all sectors that uh, are driving the leadership and are driving the engines that will let us have a 3% growth this year, which is very positive because amidst the very complex international situation, 3% growth is a favorable result. Uh, that the positive results also come from import substitution, uh, which shows the strength uh, of uh, the industry uh, and the economy. Thank you, uh, everyone, for your attendance. And if you have further questions, let's take them outside. Thank you so much.